Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Ty Lynn, and this week I'm getting started on a fun project, putting together a little patio area for our kids. So I started by building this mud kitchen. This is part one of their patio. And let's just jump right into it. All right, I have this project like 75% of the way planned. The rest of it, I'm just gonna be building on the fly. Oh, it's kind of a spur of the moment project. So I'll have to figure some of it out as I'm going. I didn't get too crazy with the sanding since it's an outdoor project, but I did hit all of the boards enough to knock down any like major splinter threats for the kiddos. I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-finish everything. I'm doing two different finishes, so it'll be easier to finish them ahead of time. That way I don't have to worry about the different colors bleeding into each other, and then also getting into the tight corners and the gaps between the tabletops and all of that. I'm just using regular pine and dug fir for this. I didn't go with cedar or pressure treated or redwood, anything like that, mostly for cost reasons, um, but I am gonna finish them with a good exterior stain and sealant. Well, I don't like how that color dried at all. Um, it doesn't look cedar tone. It's just like straight orange. So I don't know why I didn't do a sample. I know better than that. I should have done a sample, but we're just gonna pretend that this never happened. Um, I'm gonna sand them all down, refinish them. I'm gonna use this Thompson's Water Seal in Desert Tan. Yes, I did a sample this time. So we should be good on this go around. It should come out like this, much more of a muted color. I don't know why I did that. I should always test the color ahead of time. You'd think that at this point I would have learned my lesson, but here we are. <laughs> All right, this coloring is so much better. It's not gonna look quite as much like Halloween now since I've got the black with it too. I guess just lightly sanding was kind of a moot point. <laughs> it's all been sanded into oblivion now. Um, I think it was definitely worth the extra work to get the coloring right, especially since it's gonna be sitting out on the patio right in the back of the house, but kind of like in the main area. So getting the coloring uh, right is gonna look a lot nicer. All right, let's start putting it together. All right, I'm kind of making it up as I go now. So I was thinking I might need to add a brace across the middle here so that I could attach these boards to it. And now that I have it put together, I definitely need to because there's a few that have a little bit of a bow in them. I added an extra board across the top because I thought that was gonna happen. But I think what I need to do is build my frame for the little like workbench portion 
and then I can attach an extra board to that along the back and then nail these into it. Alright, I'm going to add this board along the back here to give me something else to nail these little slat pieces to, but I need to shim it on the bottom so that I have something to attach it to. You can also do pocket holes, add a second brace along the bottom. Right into it. Just make it work with what I have. So I just grab a scrap piece of half inch plywood here and then just a small cut off from one of the uh, one by threes there. I'm just going to stack them together, attach them to the bottom, and then I can put this board on the top. We're looking pretty good so far. Got the main structure at least done. Kind of working on adding the fun stuff now. I want to do these two bowls on this side over here so that they can kind of use them as sinks. But my countertop is not going to be one solid piece. It's going to be a couple two by fours that'll have uh, gaps between them to let the water go between them and so that things don't get caught in there. But as I was just thinking it through, I realized I'm going to need some extra bracing on each side of the sink so that once I cut the holes out for them, I don't just have like free hanging two by fours cause they'll just fall in. So I'm gonna add these extra braces on the edges of each of the bowls. I can't quite do it one handed here. Um, and I'm gonna flip them this way, horizontal, which normally I would do them the other way, but I'm gonna do them this way so that I can attach those countertop boards from the bottom so they don't have a bunch of extra screws along the top. use the 90 degree bit so that I can get the screws in right here. You shouldn't have to do that. It's just that this is really narrow right now since I already put everything together. You shouldn't have to deal with this situation because when I write up the whole blog post and tutorial, I'll make sure that you attach these first. But this 90 degree bit does come in handy. So you can see where these braces are 
in here. Got one here, one here. So the bowls will go right here and right here. So when I cut them out, now these two by fours have something to attach to, just cause they're not a solid piece. You know, they have gaps in between them. So they're each individual board. Uh, and if I, you know, if I cut this section out, these two would have just kind of been free hanging on both ends. So the braces just gives them something to uh, support them. And I added the screws in the bottom to each one, just so I didn't have to put any more screws along their bench top here. So that's why I put the boards horizontal up against the top so I could then just attach them from the bottom. I want to put together a little shelf to go on the, the back wall of the mud kitchen. So I just cut a one by four down to length and then cut some corbels out of the one by four also. And then I'm going to add some hooks that we can put like the pots and pans and everything on. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to put together a sign to go along the top of it. Um, I grabbed this board actually at Hobby Lobby. Uh, you, could, you could very easily just like cut it out of a scrap board that you have lying around. I was just being lazy, so I grabbed it while I was there um, and then picked up some letters for it. I just painted these with some acrylic paint that I had on hand. So I'm gonna glue them on and then seal the whole thing with an outdoor sealant. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. This was a super fun project and a big hit with the kids. I've got more details on it over on my website, so I'll put that link in the description below if you want to head on over, check that out, and build one of your own. Don't forget to subscribe for part two of the patio makeover coming at you shortly. I will see you next time.